Welcome back to the Music Period Podcast. What a break we had. Dude, that was, yeah, three weeks, four weeks. Man. It's been a couple, six months maybe. I, you know, my agent was getting a little upset that we we said we were doing two and a half weeks. Dude, and I, I got a message from him. I've said this many, many times. Fuck your agent, dude. <laughs> he has no idea what's best for us. T- Tony Goldstein? Yeah. You don't like him? No. Come on. Dude. Nice guy. Nope. Has our best interests at heart. I don't think so, man. He wants to work us to the bone. I don't like it. You know, I like the fact that he's uh, profit driven. <laughs> I like how creative his uh, approach is to what we do. And he prioritizes us in at least the top eight or nine. He was angry with us because we gave Megan the Stallion a bad review. Well, that's because they grew up together. <laughs> Tony Goldstein and Megan Thee Stallion uh-huh. grew up together. Yeah. Wow. That's not. That's like Cameron Diaz and Snoop Dogg. They went to the same elementary school. Elementary. And then neither of them finished any other school after that. <laughs> I mean, look at them now. <laughs> they both made about the same amount of good choices. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Music Period Podcast. Been a while. I'm Dave. I'm that's Sam. Sam. It's nice to be back. Not Samuel. Just Sam. Just Sam. Just Sam. Just Jeans. Just Sam. It's a real short, stupid name. Sam. They named me. They they cut it off there because they were like, he's probably going to be pretty dumb. We don't want to confuse him. <laughs> Let's not make his name too long. It's already going to be very hard to teach him how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is going to be a little different than what we have been doing lately. Um <laughs> There's just no new albums coming there out. There really isn't. No, it's all singles. And like, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff coming out from. Uh, how do I how do I put this? Nobodies who are just garbage that no one gives a fuck about. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, that's probably not how I would have put it. Oh, it's funny. You said something a lot worse earlier. Oh, I'm about to say a lot of bad things. <laughs> Woo! I know, right? <laughs> The FCC is about to send us some hefty fines for this one. I don't think FCC cares about podcasts. I actually I took the time to make sure that I invented a couple of new swear words just to make sure I could get my point across. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Can I ha- can I hear one? Uh, flongit. <laughs> was that a was that a flongit? Flong flongit. Flong. Yeah, it's it, it sounds like F W. Yeah. But it's actually T C H. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to confuse the hell out of them. Mm-hmm. So what we have decided to do this week, because we, we wanted to record. I li- honestly, I like this idea. I want to do more things like this. Yeah, I w- I'll do this every so often. Yeah. I like it. So what we did is we went to Spotify and we went to the charts. Show me the charts, baby. And we did the top 10 U.S songs top of the charts baby top of the charts we're top gonna, of the charts baby we're gonna go 10 to 1 and each give our thoughts i did not come up with the pizza or food for each no. song there's gonna be enough flavor in the <laughs> reviews for each song by themselves I yeah believe. Um, you'll be able to build your own but this is a very uh <clears throat> interesting list yeah interesting list so i mean 10 biggest songs in the country right now and i know two or three of the artists i have heard none of these songs yeah it no. blows my mind that they can be the top 10 most streamed tracks mm-hmm. and i it's all fresh yeah brand new i just i don't understand what ha- where did i did i get disconnected well i mean here's the thing it's top 10 that's always going to be new songs right some of these are probably on there for a while though i think yeah you know I guess you're probably right. I would imagine that some of these singles bounce around. You know, they land in the top three, and then they bounce around in the top six, and then after a couple of weeks, they're in the top ten. Yeah, Spotify does the red arrow, green arrow, shows you how right. it's been trending. Whatever. And it all depends on how long it's a you know a video trend on TikTok that they use the song for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that is the world we live in today. Yeah, it's not horrible or sad or anything well what do you think should they be kicked off yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh i mean they're private companies right want to yeah. get into that nope all right 
Banter boot camp, we would have. We would have. <laughs> All right, so number 10. Number 10. Without You by The Kid Leroy. Leroy? Leroy is all caps. Except for the eye. The eye wasn't? It looked like a regular normal eye when I looked at it, but I could have just been fuming. So I'm looking And my at, vision might have been shaking. I googled Charlton Kenneth Jeffrey Howard. Why isn't that his fucking name? Because <laughs> it's really long. I like it. It's also four <laughs> first names. <laughs> Which is not okay. <laughs> firsty, 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 firsty. Professionally known as the Kid... Leroy, stylized as the Kid Leroy. Leroy is all caps. It's okay. So, all right. Let me just th- take a second to digest that he has a super cool name and he's not utilizing it. Charlton, Charlton, Charlton Kenneth Jeffrey Howard. He sounds like. Uh, you ever watch the movie The Boy in the Striped Pajamas? No. So the kid <laughs> that is like the, the, the son, boy, the boy that is the son of the Nazi general guy. Well, then that's not where I expected. This Sounds to go. like that could be his name. OK, he's like very dressed, very proper in his uh, accent. Charlton you know? Kenneth Jeffrey Howard. Lots of money. Yeah. Dad kills Jews. So apparently this kid kid, he's 17 years old. Dad kills Jews. <laughs> yeah, he did. Dad almost slipped right by Woo. me there. Uh, he is from Australia. 17 years old. All right, mate. Yeah. Uh, he's he's a rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer. Is that what he is? Uh-huh. I had uh- <laughs> a couple of different professions that I thought that he was lined up in my head, but okay. Yep. Um, That's what he tells people he does? This, be- this is what somebody wrote for his Wikipedia so uh, someone's bio. Like, someone's taking up for him. I would think so. Wow. Yeah. Cool. They sound cool, too. Well, um, he got famous, famous, Mm -hmm. apparently, because he was mentored by Juice World. Mm. And you can definitely hear Juice World in his music. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So what did you you think of this song? It's called Um, Without You. It's the number 10 song in the country right now. Uh... I just, uh, it's the first thing I thought of is this is, so you know how like sometimes a big movie like the Avengers will come out Mm -hmm. and then two weeks before the release date, uh, some shitty little movie company will release like the Avengers (laughs) and just to confuse it like is totally just capitalized and trying to just be a money grab and confuse. That's like post Malone. This guy is like Uh post Malone of that. Yes. Re, but like, but it sucks a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah, and I and I'm not a big Post Malone fan. No, nah. but I feel offended for Post Malone for it, this guy. We talked about this a few weeks ago, where like these newer artists become the influencers. Yeah, we were talking about the Miley and how it was heavily influenced by the weekend. The Post Malone's another one of those guys where you're like, it makes sense that he's influencing. Yep, but just didn't see it coming. Yeah, and this and this cat, the kid Leroy. Is Charlton Char- Charlton Kenneth Jeffrey Howard? We should sign up, get a petition, <laughs> get a petition to get him to change his name. <laughs> Make it really hard to search his shit. <laughs> Carlton Kenneth J- get Jeffrey Howard. Typing, I got fuck it. I don't even fucking want to listen to <laughs> it. Song sucks. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely some Post Malone in there. There's definitely uh, a ton of Juice World. It's this. It's this new emo rap, dude. I feel I'm gonna have to talk about this a couple times. But how? Did this happen? It's, How did this happen? It's like a computer virus. I don't... In the simulation that we live I in. I can't figure out even how they met. Yeah. Well, I I can because teenage angst mixed with pop culture will give you a, a real runny shit if you're not careful with it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. But something had to happen. Like, there's got to be... A record company or an insider or something that put a couple things together that just didn't make sense and then it just caught fire and it's spreading like fucking COVID-19. It's like either, I don't understand. It's either that or it's the access to recording gear, the easy access to being able to record music yourself okay. and people uh, putting it on the internet right. for mass consumption. You don't need the same like 
uh, the doors, the same doors don't need to open for you Mm -hmm. for a thing to grow anymore. It can become a grassroots movement, even if it's like, if it shouldn't be. I get that, but I just want to know where they met. Yeah. Uh, You know, I, I, I wish that we could pinpoint it. I feel like, like is it just because triple triple X Tenacion was big? Right. That's a great. <clears throat> uh, that's an album I'm okay with. The one with the question mark on it. Mm-hmm. That's a good. Yeah, album. I like it too. There's a couple Juice World songs where I was like, okay, I can get down with this. But did it all start with Kid Cudi? I think it was. Um, so great, great point. I think it was a mixture of that generation, the tail end of listening to like the last few albums of blink 182 my chemical romance Blink 182 and my chemical they definitely come to mind and then you think wait a second wasn't there a song where the lead singer Haley did a crossover track with b.o.b b.o.b is that where it fucking started holy shit did we just pinpoint it yo that might I'm be like where it started yeah, right now that might be that might be where it was yep because Par- that's like the tail Paramore was one of those bands mm-hmm. that was like an e- the end of emo but the tail end of their shit was more so like getting into electronic stuff yep and then B.O.B. was like a skateboarder yep so it's real easy for those two worlds to clash yep. and then B.O.B. turned into Anderson Pock. right <laughs> just I feel like, like got a little person. shorter and put a beanie on <laughs> yeah right yeah that's crazy I was starting to think about how this how it could have happened and I forgot all about that Haley B.O.B. song yeah but the, and that was a huge that song. was a very big song and he also had Cuddy around that same time mm-hmm. making man on the moon yep and he was a rapper who was like actually talking about his feelings because he deals with right. depression and all that shit and you right. never really heard that before and then maybe kitty sp- uh kitty <laughs> Cuddy spawned from kanye because he was doing that a little bit mm-hmm. like you know being honest about his mental disorder and like through the wire which was a massive song yep and dealing with <clears throat> what it was like to be in a massive accident right that, that wasn't hip-hop. you're being vulnerable yes in hip-hop which is like if you did that in 1992 someone would stab you, yeah. you know, like, oh yeah. you're a pussy yeah okay. you're, you're getting shot at the bet <laughs> right. awards yeah. right somebody kill this guy <laughs> and everyone's fine with it yeah, like, yeah it's police fine. and everything <laughs> oh no <laughs> I thought these wires were shorter now. Yeah, nope, still long. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think that's. I think that's a. I think that is around. At least that's the time frame. Yeah. That it, those that those children right. were listening to this. Yeah. And it was like creating, uh, you know, a virus, a gross <laughs> vi- virus. That I also kind of put it too. Sorry, was Eminem. Yeah. When he got big. He was, you know, uh, cleaning out my closet and talking about how his mom was just a shitty ass mom. But he got so big that he was a rap artist who was being played on alternative stations. Right. And so we see a large crossover in fan base between black people and white people. Yes. The white people bringing in like, you know, shitty emotional stuff and black people bringing in, uh, you know, coolness (laughs) (laughs) coolness <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah flow beats right. rhythm finding yeah. a way to take that thing and stylize it in a way where everybody can enjoy it right yeah. so if you're looking for the new Eminem song and all of a sudden you turn on your local alternative station and you hear some blink 182 mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you're being influenced by both things yeah because this song is shitty it, it's not good it's bad but it's like a mix of It's like what Juice World used to do. Yep. Because he has since passed. It's what Triple X used to do. He has since passed. Which is crazy that they're like martyrs in the hip hop game. I know. Yeah. It's fucking wild. Like, is. I'm I'm a little out of tune, but are Triple X and Juice World now like Tupac and Biggie? I mean, in a different sense. You know, like without minus the feud and like the. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're they're this generation's like. That's wild. The people on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. For the seventeen and eighteen year olds yeah. out there, people just get and out I don't and I don't want to come off as crusty old guy because no. I actually liked Triple X. Um, yeah, me too. But it's just <clears throat> man that that's the direction. The thing that sucks is that when one person is themselves mm-hmm. and people like it, then other people. The thing you like is that they're unabashedly them, and it shines and it makes them different and it makes them unique. And that's what the draw and the appeal is: is that okay? I like this thing not only because obviously I like the way it sounds, but it's it feels original. It feels authentic. Mm-hmm. And then when you have a bunch of people just trying to capitalize on that sound, 
and that's I think that's where I my brain kind of breaks a little bit is in my head I go these people that do this shit they're not genuinely influenced and it, it hasn't been around for long enough for it to like sink into you and subtly change the way that you write at 16 years old right. or whatever you know yeah. what I mean like yeah. you're, you're just doing it because it's fucking but they're young and idiots and we're all idiots at 16 but yeah. we sh- it's just it's honestly a little tragic that they have this platform to do it yeah like I try to think when I when I listen to new artists like this I try to think of okay is this one going to be around yeah in right. five ten years like who out there right now that's new is going to be our you know uh, dude all we have is that we have a sea of vanilla ices and Millie Vanillies right now yeah like I think that Billie Eilish stands out. Yep. I know that we, you and I kind of disagree on her a little bit, but I think that she'll be around. Yeah. I think that she'll be uh, influential for a very long time. Yeah. She's I, she's gonna have the same kind of presence as somebody like Lady Gaga. I yes. Think. Thank you. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In the in the same category. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously I just, not a mimic or anything. No, but. no, no. I don't see these kids like Kid Leroy being around. No. And you know how I feel like we can tell is that <clears throat> when you listen to what they're talking about there's there's nothing there nothing in there's one nothing. line he's saying you can't make a wife out of a hoe but in the next line he's apologizing and it's so like, so who did it you or her what the fuck are when, you talking about when your dude? first attempt you're already fucking running on empty yeah. fucking you got nothing left it's gonna dry out so you could yes you could fucking produce garbage and more garbage and put it in a landfill for the rest of time. This person could make music forever that just sucks, but the allure of it's going to die down because everyone's going to go, okay, I've heard this shit from right. the same fucking person before. Yeah. You know? But yeah, Ooh. I mean, this song, it, the, so the song, I have a couple of really specific criticisms I hated about it, and I want to make sure that. I'm if, still on the first song. I know. <laughs> yeah, for real. Who cares? What <laughs> um, so the whole track is wildly edited. Yeah. The whole even nothing the, flows together. Dude, the fucking even the shitty guitar track is fucking digitally edited. You couldn't even strum it. You yeah. couldn't even fucking strum the chords for the guitar I had track. I hope so. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be like acoustic sounding, but you're right. It's so fucking It sounds like they ha- not- it sounds like he couldn't do a single take and they just had to splice everything together and it's yeah. even more prominent on the vocals. It sounds like he was so bad on his vocal takes that they had to pick one word out of each of his fucking takes and just copy and paste the thing together. It sounds Ugh. so fake. Sounds so digitized. It sounds so fucking Ugh. just. It, you can't even perform it on a record and sell it. Come on, man. Right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. If you can't do that, go practice a little bit and come back in six yeah, months. Yeah, you're still young. Seriously. Is this kid 11? He's 17. Dude, what are these lyrics? No, they're garbage. It's like the fucking. When you're in like middle school and your teacher's like, write a poem and you're like, <laughs> these are the first words that I thought of that rhyme. Yeah. It's so it's so fucking Humpty Dumpty childish, mm-hmm. bad performance, the fucking production sucks, the mix sucks. Mm-hmm. It's garbage and it's in the, and it's the number 10 most listened to song of the fucking charts. Of the charts, yeah, of Jesus. the country right now. Yep. It's bad. It's very, very not good. I did not like it. I had, like I said, I had hopes when I was like, oh, okay. I'm happy that it's in last place of the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. If I can take one positive thing away from this, I'm glad it's last. Was it your least favorite song? Nope. <laughs> nope. Mine, mine either. Mine either. <laughs> All right. We beat up a 17 year old enough, I think. Yep. All right. Number nine The Beebs. You may have heard of this guy. The Beebster. His name is Justin Bieber. Justin Beebsterton. Is it Bieber? It's uh, Justin Long. Bieber. <laughs> uh, so it's a song called Anyone yeah. by Mr. Bieber. Yep. So at least this kid knows how to make a pop song. Yeah, right. You know? <clears throat> and once again, I, I I just have this fear in the back of my head that when people are going to listen to this, they're going to go, the only ones that they fucking even listen to and tried to accept are the ones that are already established. Nope. Nope. Nope, you're wrong. You're wrong. I didn't like this one me. either. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know this one either. I fucking don't like this. I don't. Fu- the only thing that I can say is that the sound of the instrumentation was uh, not boring a little bit. It's funny That's because it. in my notes I wrote boring. Right. The Tired. Fu- 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so don't, don't, don't these people get sick of making the same song over and over and over again? We get it, man. You love this person. Right. Cool. I mean, dude, even on a fucking production side, like this kid can sing. I yeah. know he can sing. He's a talented He's, kid. Why is it so fucking heavily auto-tuned, but not to the point where they're using it as like a fucking way to color it like right, T-Pain right, right. would do? Yeah. Or like Kanye did on 808s. It just sounds like you fucking barely tried in the studio and they said, we can fix it. And now it sounds like a fucking bad take. <laughs> right. It's just fucking garbage, dude. And like I was... You know, the sound of the synthesizers, it was kind of round. It was kind of fucking 16 bit E a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I go, okay, maybe I can listen to this. So you could say a little spark of interest came out. Right. But as soon as the chorus ended, I lost all my interest and I fucking couldn't get back. It's funny it. because I had a very similar process without even knowing how to put it into words like you just did. I was like, oh, okay. And yeah. then immediately just, it pff, went, nowhere. never mind. This sucks. Fucking went nowhere. Yeah garbage we're gonna come off like crusty old men i know and that's fine because we're right <laughs> I, I mean yeah I, I like music everybody right i'm open to it i guess like all kinds it is i i the one thing i don't know about justin bieber is this a progression in his career i don't know well i mean did you ever hear that what was that last song he did like i got the yummy yummy i never heard it it's not great it's not good well, it's called yummy it's, he says it's it's the the fucking tired uh, criticism of it is that he just says yummy all the time, which, OK, that's fine. You can do whatever you want as a fucking lyricist, as a vocalist, as a songwriter. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Right. You could say the N word 1600 times in a song. It's your choice. But Yikes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't but think Bieber can do that. <laughs> the fucking once again, the music is boring. In it. It's yeah, fucking, it's, it's super boring. I one of my least favorite on this list. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I, I didn't, I didn't find anything redeeming other than okay. I mean, knows how to make a song. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yep. Number eight. There was nothing tried. Number eight. Let's get away from that okay. fucking piece of garbage. Eight. This is a song called "Hoopty" by CJ. CJ. And let me just say, I know that I said I was glad that that last guy was number ten, but this guy deserves it. Yes. This guy sucks a lot. Thank God this song is only two minutes. Long. Like I, dude, he's addicted to blue cheese. He said it like I don't know fifty times. I've never ever been happy that a song was so short. Ugh. I got thirty seconds into it, and I said, "How much longer do I have to fucking listen to Seriously. this?" Seriously, there's nothing redeeming about this nothing. song. Nothing. It's the garbage. Mi the Middle Eastern chanting over and over and over. He's trying to capture a thing that's worked in hip hop for a very long time. Like Kanye does it very well. But it just comes off as repetitive mm -hmm. here. And anytime a rapper rhymes bullshit with full clip, I'm tapped out. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. But you give a bingo chart that like Seriously. your fucking uh, your typical Christ, shit you hear that man. bugs you. Yeah, this song, I don't even want to dive into it and say what I hate so much about it. It just deserves the last place spot for whatever list it's on. It doesn't matter if it's this one <laughs> or somebody else's. And it could be a little shorter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's rhyming noises, not even words. Yeah. It's it's fucking awful. Shit. All right. Number seven was Lemonade. By Internet Money. By Internet Money right. featuring Gunna, Don <laughs> Tolliver, and Nav. Yeah. Da 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 blah 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 da 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 blah. Only reason I didn't hate this one as much as the other ones is because the guy who's singing the chorus kind of sounds like Juice World, and it kind of sounds yeah, like bit. he's actually trying to sing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than just fucking like very low energy, it actually sounds like he's projecting a little bit. He's trying to do something. I don't know who did the chorus. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not yeah. saying that he should continue to make music. I don't. But he's the. <laughs> it's the only thing that brought it up from a fucking. Digging a hole in the dirt, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know who's who in the song no, at all. I, I don't want to know. No. I did I did write the beat could be worse. Exactly. It wasn't like... There's a couple of it's things... It's in the top five of this list. Right. It's in the top <laughs> nine of this list for me, I think. Yeah. Not right. positive. Yeah, right. I haven't securely landed yet. And what, Dude, why is hip-hop still talking about ice? Ice. They're still ranting and raving about ice. Yeah, I don't know. I'm it's, so sick of it. It's so cheesy. It really is. It's so cheesy. It was cheesy back then. It's dated it's now, too. It's still cheesy now. And it's dated now. You know what I mean? Fuck your necklace, man. I know. Fuck your watch. Right. Fuck your rings. Fuck your teeth. 
dude, people are getting diamonds implanted into their teeth now. <sighs> You're gonna die someday, dude. With any luck. And then someone's gonna rob your grave, hopefully. <laughs> and your family gets upset about it. It's bad. It's not good, but the name made me laugh, so. Lemonade. Internet money. Internet money, yeah. It's pretty good. I, I tried to look them up. It, it's like a it's like a, a producing group. Like, I don't even know if I'm sure internet they call them, money is the, the rappers. I bet you they call themselves a collective. Yeah. Because it's 2021. Taz Taylor. And they're different than just a normal group. You know, <laughs> what we do is different. Yeah. We all it's we're making art and we're not limiting ourselves. Taz Taylor. Real name. Danny Snodgrass Jr. <laughs> Snodgrass, can't make that up. Mm. Is an American record producer, songwriter, and record executive. Also known uh, all, as well as the founder of the Internet Money Collective. Ding, 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 ding. Bingo. And I have bingo. Label. I have bingo. <laughs> someone come check. I have bingo. Yeah. Good God, dudes. It's sad when it's predictable. Right. Uh, give me something fun to make fun of. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can listen to your song one time, and I know your entire life and everything you are from front to back. Wow. You're just a fucking <laughs> piece of paper, dude. You're so It's so thin and fucking not veiled. There's no depth to it. It's just fucking go get a life. Wow. Go get a life. Wow. I hate it. Number fucking seven song in the country, and you're telling this kid to get a life. Yeah. Danny Snodgrass. Daniel. Dan <laughs> Do you think his father is proud of him? Do you think these kids' parents call them by their rap name or by their real name? <laughs> Daz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yep. So bad. I bet you they call him by their rap name. Probably. Yeah. Why isn't he MC Snodgrass? Or Lil Snodgrass. Or like Snotty. Snotty. Just call yourself fucking Snotgrass. You, do, you don't incorporate grass anywhere? Weed. It's weed, you nerd. You're rapping. <laughs> be cool for a second. Can you just be cool for one fucking second? Internet money, son. God. All right. The Bitcoin boys. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Mood by 24K Golden. With no E. With no E, featuring Ian Dior. So this is more of that emo rap bullshit. Yeah. I just don't understand. I, I almost thought that the same song was in the top ten three times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sounds a lot like number ten. Um, it's, they're talking about being depressed one second and this is, living the high life the next. Uh, that's just, the thing. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. You can, you, you're allowed to like shitty music. Mm -hmm. I like shitty music. Yeah. But like, I don't, at least be cohesive from line to line. Yeah. Have, you don't need a message in your song, but like have it at least make sense within the English language. You know what I mean? It'd be a good start. Why are you always in a mood? Fucking around, acting brand new. I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but try to play it cool. You just told her what to do. Right. Or with him, or whoever it is. You know what I mean? Whoever you're talking to. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Yeah. Also, baby, I ain't playing by your rules. Everything look better with a view. I don't understand what that means, literally. Yeah. I... I is it just I'm with you because you're hot or am I putting a message that he didn't even realize was into his song? It's all about looks. Yep. But at the same time, why are you always in a mood? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking it's misogynistic. So non huh? it's, That's yeah, crazy. It's just fucking non I didn't even pick up on that. It's just, non cohesive. Yeah. Just the fuck are you crying about? Honestly. And how old are these? these I guess that's the thing. These are children. Right. And it's, do you this think, is what bothers me. Do you think if we went back 20 years and and say there was a Spotify and we went through a top 10, do you think it'd be any better? 
Or do you think we would just be nostalgic for I it? I think you'd have more mature songwriting. I think so? If you went back 20 years. Okay, so what are maybe we... Maybe not 20, 20 years. Maybe not 20 years. Because I was... I'd be 12. Yeah. So there, I, there was like definitely like lit and like out uh, offspring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm not saying that like lyrical content has gotten fucking 10 times better. Right. But the the thing that... And I, I had written the majority of this commentary piece about the the number one song Uh but the fact that these kids are young and that it's these feelings even if they're not truly having them a lot of people are yeah like i i i wrote music when i was 12 i wrote music when i was 17 i wrote shit like this right nobody heard it yeah and also i was an emotional teenager so those things that I thought I was feeling, uh-huh. they were real to me, but they didn't have the same kind of effect long term in my life as I thought that they would. Yep. And so when you have a number one song that's kind of saying, these are my feelings and they're real and it's this dramatic and it's this sad and it's, you know, just it's depression and all these awful things. And then the public's affirming it. We're like, you're right. Yeah. That is. Yeah. We're not, we're like setting that person up to not understand emotion properly. You know what I mean? We're like, everything you're saying is right. It's true. You're never going to grow past this. You're never going to get better at processing this shit. It's like terrible. I feel like it's a really bad move. Huh. This is more dire than I even thought. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I looked up the girl for the number one uh, slot and I was like, 17? She's 17. 17. And she's singing about how like, I, I'll never love. This is like the only you know, I love. I loved you, and I'm never. I've, nobody else. Is, it's like this is really dramatic. Yeah. And there's like probably 13 year olds that are like, I feel the same way. Right. And she feels that way, and everybody's saying she's right because everyone listens to it. So that means I'm right too. And then you got fucking kid with depression. Boom. Well, then you also got to think about 20 years ago. What was the number one song? Let's say it was Eminem. Mm-hmm. He's talking about some pretty dark shit there. For sure. But has that shaped where that age group is now? Possibly. Mentally, maybe uh, maybe a percentage. Yeah, for sure. I mean, right? the lands, I mean, it had a big enough impact for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of feel like we're we're going down the road of crusty old guys listening to new music and hating it. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. Cuz I can't lie and say right. that I like this shit. I just, I like to look back and think, okay, what was it like back then? Right. And have we, I don't think we've progressed, but have we actually gotten worse or is it just in line and this is what pop music is? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's music is always a reflection of where we're at in society. Right. Right. So I think that's what the real issue here with all this stuff is. Um, But I mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm not even disagreeing. Right. I do think it sets a really bad precedent. Be, I, I, my number one issue with it is that the so like if it was a thirty five year old singing this song about heartbreak, it's a different thing than a fucking sixteen year old with True. ten million followers and she's making fucking four hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, all of a sudden that's it's just it changes the impact of it. Yeah, I don't really know how to word it properly, but like no, I get it. I just you know you you go back, Britney Spears. Yep. She was doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe she had a better producer behind her. Sure. Max Martin. Yeah. Ba- uh, Backstreet Boys and Sync. They're all talking about heartbreak. They're all talking about Max Martin, Max Martin. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like maybe it just sounds better because they had a better producer behind them. I don't know. Right. But it's kind it's kind of the same. Yeah, you're right. You're right. For sure. And I mean, it would be a joke to say that not that heartbreak and depression and sadness are not like the number one influence of great songwriting. Right. Of course they are. Yeah. Right. Of course they are. Right. And they're, and like this generation is probably going to end up just fine and it's not going to affect them the way that it just, it worries me a little bit. No, I hear you because yeah, it is concerning. Like I have, I have children yeah. and I don't want them listening to music and reaffirming everything. Like, like where, maybe it's, maybe it's just a music problem like you said because that's what drives creativity mm-hmm. is heartbreak and problems and overcoming and yeah. all this shit like positive music is looked at as corny I know you know but we could all use look at them. Chance the Rapper he yeah. got fucking torn apart for singing about how he loves his wife exactly <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy
But also, we're adults doing it, so we're right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That uh, it's uh, <laughs> "Mood" by Twenty Four Golden. Not a good song. No, not a good song. All right, I need a bathroom break. Okay, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Dave's done taking the shit. We're back. All right. <laughs> Just number one. Yeah, you peed out or you shit out the front. Ew. That's what you do. That's what number you, that's what you do. five. My here, girl. Here we go. My girl. 34 plus 35 by Ariana Grande. What is 34 plus 35? Don't know. 69. I was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yes, it is. Ah, uh, that explains the last line of the song. <laughs> that explains why I had a boner the whole time I was listening to it. Okay, so you love Ariana Grande. I love, yeah, let's just clarify. I love Max Martin, and Ariana Grande is a vessel for him. I really enjoyed, apparently it wasn't her last album the one before sweetener sure okay. i don't know i don't know which one it was would you know what it looks like no black and white or brown <sighs> she have, is it the one that i have the t-shirt I don't, for i don't know do you know what year it came out <laughs> do you know what studio it she was, recorded it, it in it wasn't very long ago do you know how, how many songs are on it wow runtime i don't I don't. I guess what I so. Who was she dating when she recorded that? I think, I think it was Pete. She, her, and Pete just broke up, mm. which still makes no sense to me. Okay, so Ariana Grande. Everyone knows where I'm at with this one. Yeah, you love. Do you like this song? Uh, I didn't hate it. There yeah. are parts of it I I do I do like mm-hmm. for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I like this song. Reminds me of like if Audrey Hepburn. The song doesn't. The, what the. The style that she does now with the the instrumentation mm. and the music, because like I said before, I'll clear this up for everybody. I like didn't even listen to what she was talking about. Mm-hmm. I was more so listening to it from a you know, a graduated, educated music professional's stand of view, viewpoint, stand, okay. of, stand of view. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the strings and everything—they're very romantic. Okay. Uh, Song's very romantic too. Yeah, I know. Well, we all want a bone, baby. I get it. But it reminds me of like if Audrey Hepburn were a singer, she'd have instrumentation that sounds like that. Very fucking swoony and romantic and French. Wow. And I couldn't be further away. Yeah. <laughs> on this song. I'm not talking about her vocals for lyrical content. Audrey Hepburn? Yeah. Take the take the lyrics what? out of it. Take the lyrics out of it. I can't. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Agree to disagree. I mean, that's fine. But clearly you haven't seen Audrey Hepburn's adult film work. <laughs> this song is about how she's like gearing up. I know. I said, take that out. She's like, I'm <laughs> drinking coffee. I'm eating healthy yep. because I want to stay up all night. I'm doing fuck. my kegels. Yeah. Make my pussy tight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just, it's, it's fucking lame, dude. The yeah. song is fucking lame. Yeah. Right. And I expected more. Yeah. She's I, a fucking perfect pop star. She's great. This song sucks. I wonder who wrote the lyrics to it. Like, who wrote it, you know? Fucking Megan Thee Stallion? Yeah, it could be. Definitely could be. It wasn't Max Martin, that's for sure. No. No. But I, I, I guess maybe this is coming from a view of I wanted this to be a good song. Yeah. And I just was let down. Yeah. But it's funny, though, because, like, uh, side to side... You like that song? Do I? I mean, you didn't. You didn't have the same visceral reaction. I don't think that's a good song. Right, but that one's just I mean, the as video's much about sexy. That one's about like getting fucked until you can't fucking walk anymore. I understand that. <laughs> There's also a visual representation <laughs> right. of that song, which I fully appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite getting the picture, but the video really helped clear that up for me. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I didn't quite know what she was talking about. Could that's, use a that's little the bit thing. more. The song is so on the nose. Yeah, just like yeah, just like with fuck the, me to daylight. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. that's that's lame. You're better than that. I dude, I can admit all day that though I like her and some other shitty pop stars. Mm-hmm. The songs are garbage. They're garbage. Yeah. I can admit that all day. Well, one of these records, I'm try- still trying to find it. <laughs> the one that's black and white. Okay. Where she's wearing the bunny ears. Thank You Next. Thank You Next is great, too. I like that one. Yeah. So, like, but, like, I'm not going to any of those songs to relate to them emotionally. You know what I mean? No. So, like, <clears throat> and I, I, and, like, that, I guess that's just a hurdle I've already gotten over with her is that, like, I accept 
before I even go into an album or a song that I this this is not that's not what I'm going here for. Mm-hmm. It's just fucking mindless, right? Predictable almost, mm-hmm. like very uh, just audibly pleasing without having to think about it. Mindless. Okay, I guess it would have sat better with me if I found it. Yeah, audibly pleasing, right? But I didn't. Think about Audrey Hepburn next what, time. What am I? <laughs> One of my least favorite songs on this list. I was saying a lot. I'll let, I'll make sure to let her know. But it's funny because if I tried to it. put them in order, I don't even know. I know. How the fuck I would All do of it. them are number ten. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And ten is not good. Except there's one song for me. Okay. Well, and it's m- this next one. <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. Oh man. So can we do these next two as a, a partner sure. piece? So number four and number three are both by Morgan Wallen. Right. Country. Uh, is that number, what that is? <laughs> number four is somebody's problem, and number three is wasted on you. And go ahead, Sam. What a fucking tragedy this guy is. Mm-hmm. Good fucking lord, this is real bad, really bad garbage. Yes, real bad. The hottest it's, garbage on this list. It's just the grossest garbage I've ever heard, dude. It's fucking. <laughs> it's he's so completely sucked into the fucking music industry like machine. Yes, it makes me want to fucking throw up. Okay, it's so. Gross. This this guy is what it sounds like when you sacrifice all of your artistic integrity, Whew. all of it. Wow. You just compl- and you you give it away. Will they're like we only need ten percent, and you're like take all of it. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't care. Take I don't all even of want it. Any it's of fucking it. disgusting, dude. Yeah. It's like I like really like country music. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like folk and I like all that Americana stuff. And I I feel like this is like offensive. It's like offensive. Okay. You know, because people who really, this is like an art form that people really care about. Yeah. Storytelling. It's fucking, it's almost like heritage. You yep. know what I mean? And when you fucking bastardize it like this with no regard as to what you're doing, you're just completely fucking tearing it apart. It's, it makes me upset. How thrown together is somebody's problem? It's like too fast. It's gross. It's just a really, really bad song. It's gross. Yeah. And I mean, it's. I know that pop country is shitty. I know that. Yes. This this guy like I I know a lot of people that listen to him and they like really like him. Really. Yes. And so I wanted to like this a lot. I wanted this to be like another kind of Chris Stapleton kind of thing. Where no. No, I know. I wanted it to be. I had no idea. You know. I I I get that. Like <clears throat> I can put that bullshit aside and just enjoy it for what it is. But fucking this is bad. Fucking. Dude, there's that. First, what's the number three song called? Wasted on you. Wasted on you might be the worst pop country song I've ever heard. Whoa! It just, dude, it's a fucking. It starts off with this riff and a vocal melody that are kind of interesting. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's a country song with sub bass and trap hi hats. I was gonna say there's a trap beat thrown in. Are there. you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I don't Hank get it. Hank Williams would fucking be rolling over in his grave if he cared to know about who Isn't you are. Isn't it okay to experiment though? Sure, it definitely is okay to do crossovers, but right. you have to have respect for the genres that you're mixing together. Yeah, and this guy is not respecting either of them. Well, it's the people behind him, right? Yeah, but he chose to let this happen. He, I, in my head. He wanted this to happen. Well, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he heard it and said, oh, this is going to get played. I'm going to be huge. Yeah. He was, mean, on, he was on The Voice. Really? And lost. Good. Yeah. He Can didn't even go win back the and show. lose again? <laughs> this is like cultural appropriation, but in music. I don't understand. This is a little, not off topic, but a little bit uh, veering off here. Why does every country song have to mention either Chevy or Ford? Because it's all fucking formulaic bullshit in a machine that just pumps it out. Mm-hmm. Like a fucking Acme cartoon. I think country is run by Big Truck. Right. Yeah. Not run by Big Soap, that's for sure. <laughs> or Big ed- Education. <laughs> you know, remember when uh, one of the Kardashian girls was... Uh, you remember when one of the Kardashian girls was seen wearing like a Slayer shirt? No. So she like did a shoot in a Slayer shirt. Okay. And the metal community like got offended. Well, get over it. It's hilarious though. Yeah. And that's what this is. It's the same thing. It's offensive to the country, like real country music. This is offensive. Huh. And when I listen to shit like this, 
I have a hard time even criticizing it because Steve Earle had the best review or like uh, explanation of what pop country is nowadays. Okay. Have you heard it? No. Let me quote the man himself. Okay. Steve Earle says modern country stars make hip hop for people who are afraid of black people. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh huh. Okay. Sorry that got loud for people pretty, listening. That it's is good. pretty good. Yeah. Whoa. So he he nailed it, and nothing else needs to be said about this fucking guy and his piece of shit song. I'm I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Yeah. Number two is a song called "Good Days" by an artist named SZA. SZA. So I saw this before. I went ten to one every yeah. time I listened to it. I never went one to ten. I always I don't know one why. To 10. Yeah, I don't know why. But I could see her at the top, and the whole time I'm going, please, please, right, save me, please, be good. I've heard you on other tracks, and I, I yeah. like it a lot. So I like her. Save me. I like her, and uh, her style's weird, man. She like sings off beat. Yeah, it's very strange. Right. <clears throat> um, I. This is probably my favorite song on the list. Her and Kendrick match well. Yes. That song that was on the Black Panther soundtrack is very, very good. Yep. Yeah. So I, I I liked this song. Yep. I liked it. There's <clears throat> didn't love it. Yeah, I didn't love it either. Um I wanted the production on it to be a little more clear because the guitar riff on the nylon string guitar was really cool, it was really interesting. Yeah. But it got lost. Yeah, it's, it got it, distorted. It got kind of boring. Yeah, there was no direction in the, the song. There was no clarity yeah. in like the the notation or anything like that. Yeah. So I got lost in that. I wanted that to be a little more clear. And then I couldn't help but laugh. Uh, there's a couple of fucking times where she says like a, a line or two and it sounds like she has just like one or two marshmallows in her cheeks. <laughs> yeah. It's really weird. No, I hear you. It's it's weird. Her style is very odd. I'm surprised that I mean she's obviously has like a newish record out. Yeah. I don't know when it came out or whatever, but this is the single. I know. Yeah. You know, it's weird though because it's just like one or two marshmallows. You know, it's not like a whole <laughs> chubby bunny situation or anything. It's chubby just, bunny. Remember that game? No. You see how many marshmallows you can fit in your mouth? How many could you fit? Probably a lot. Infinite. Infinite. You're still going? I got a fucking real big mouth. You bruh. do. Bruh. <laughs> bruh. Bro. Yeah, I didn't hate this song. This, I wanted to like it more than I actually This one's did, number but... 10. This one's number one. The rest of them are number 10. Yeah. Yeah. For this list. Yeah. For this list, relatively. Uh, uh, relatively. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You were looking at me like you were <laughs> I scared that I was going to like I, attack you. I just had a minor, minor stroke. Uh, yeah, a miney one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is Stairway to Heaven on this list. Yeah, right. You know? I know. This is like a fucking Robert Johnson blues song. This is Yesterday. Yeah, Which right. is crazy. This is like Bach's best piece, you know? <laughs> this is when he fucking heard that classical uh, composition at the church and transcribed it by ear while he was deaf in one ear. That's what that song is. By the way, is Yesterday the most perfect song ever written? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, without a it's doubt. It's got to be right. Scientifically proven. Yeah. 2018, I think, was when they did the study. I'm trying to relate with you. It's so good. It's the most covered song. Or no, it's either Yesterday or Blackbird. One of those two is the most covered song of all time. Yeah. I don't hear many people try to do Yesterday. It's probably Blackbird. Yeah. Yesterday is like sacred. Yeah. I feel like the Vatican could take it and go, this is ours now. And everyone would be like, that makes sense. Yeah. It's a damn good song. Great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this next song is not Yesterday. You no. You touched on this song a little bit already. Yeah. It's number one. It's called Driver's License, and it's by Olivia Rodrigo. You know, I should have known going in that this was by someone young, by the yeah. name. Yeah. I should have known. I, I kind of figured it. But at the same time, maybe, you know, the idea of, like, you know, if I today were to write a song about the the first experiences after getting, like, you know, go driving alone to my fucking girlfriend's house or, like, doing that first late night drive where I'm driving. Right. Like that's romantic. Yep. You know, you're yeah, nostalgic. Sure. You're nostalgic for yeah, it. Yeah. But this one, I didn't, it's not that. So I just don't understand. She can't really sing. So I, I was getting uh hints of Eilish, Billie yeah. Eilish a little bit. Mm. Like somebody's trying to capitalize very, very breathy vocals. Yep. But when Billy needs to sing, she can fucking sing. That's the thing. When she tries to sing, she sounded like she was yelling. Yeah. 
Right. The projection is all off. Way off. Untrained. Yeah. And What's mo- the- mostly unrecognized by the masses. It's cool that you recognize it. Yeah. It's just... It makes me like go, you need a little more incubation time before you're released to the public. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like you're she close. needs some time in the minor leagues. You're clo- yeah, right. Right. We see a lot of potential in you. And that's okay. You. That's, it's awesome. It should be fucking, you should be like humbled yeah. to have someone say that to you. You know There what I mean? should be a music seven, minor leagues. There should be a music minor leagues. Wow. Do they wear uniforms? Sure. Dude, it could be like <laughs> in the like 60s when the band's all like the label would go on tour together and they'd uh-huh. all play like two or three songs. Yep. This is an idea. I like it. How bring hard, it back. how Full hard would it be to, to time, not time travel. Like we could do it today. How hard <laughs> would it be to do it today? To do it today? Yeah. What? Make the minor leagues happen today. We need to get a lot of people on board. Right. Well, I mean, we have a pretty large platform. There's also, <laughs> I mean, surprisingly, I know. Um, it's a wide platform. Yeah, um, it's just the music has always been dictated by the listener. Yeah, you know, right? People need to buy it. People need to download it. People need to stream it. Mm-hmm. So, in the eyes of the masses, this is a major league song. Right. How do we change that? Cause this this song is on a Make level of like free, like <laughs> 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 higher stimulus checks. I, I don't know. Move everyone out of West Virginia. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah, you gotta you have to raise the floor. Yeah, but you know what you, I mean. How do you do that? I don't know, dude. It's the lowest common denominator is never at its bottom. <laughs> It's kind of sad. I know. I just, I just thought of that. Yeah. I'm going to go kill myself now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, just, I, wow. What's up with this too? Uh, she's 17. Yeah. She's a Disney star too. Oh, is she? Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised at 17 years old that they're letting her say fuck in the hook. Yeah. Brave new world we live in. Yeah. I, I'm not offended by the use of fuck. It's fine. No, it's fucking fine, dude. Uh, <laughs> a, perfectly, a perfectly placed fuck can make a song very, very good. Right. But it's becoming something that's used so often now that it's losing that touch. Yeah. It's becoming <clears throat> a cheesy tool to go, I'm young. Exactly. I'm edgy. You can relate to me. Exactly. Yep. You listen to I'm, it on the radio. There's an edit and you go, oh, whoa. I'm not, I'm not a pop star. I just recorded this in my room. I wrote it just about a boy in high school that yep. I, you're a fucking Disney. St- it's funny how Someone wrote this. stupid people are yeah. because that one F word mm-hmm. will change everybody's perception. Of yep. Her. She's just like me. Yep. And she's not just like you. Yeah. What's with the weird turn? I got it down to 230 mark. The fucking awful kumbaya campfire sing along chant. Yeah. Get that shit out of there. It's fucking what the fuck awful. Happened? Yeah. Awful. You turned a bad song even worse by it's like but it's a bridge, I guess. I don't it's, fucking know. I like fucking like cheesy, like the whole audience like, yeah, yeah singing right. along with you to your fucking simple little fucking one, two, <laughs> one, two. And she's like, dumb dumbs. Dumb dumbs. Yeah. It's fucking, it's pandering. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number one. Yeah. Biggest song in the country right now. I mean, I just as much shock and awe at any of these tracks being number one. Yeah, I guess. I I mean, mean, less so much, less so much for, uh, you know, Bieber, Ariana Grande and scissor. Yeah. Scissor. Scissor. (laughs) I mean, yeah, because they're, they're well known. Right. It makes more sense to me. Yeah. Not strong songs anywhere, though. No. No. Real All weak. ten. Not one strong song it's, that I will ever go back to. It's real bad garbage. Mm-hmm. It's not good. Maybe this is our show. I know, Maybe right? we do this every week. Just every week we take like, the, ne- <laughs> the recent most like the, the things you like hated <laughs> by Dave and Sam. Reasons why you should change your mind about yeah. the things you thought you I'm liked. not even trying to change people's minds. No. This is just how I see the current state on Spotify, the top 10 stream song. I'm, they're, they're just not good. And it's not good. No. No. And I, you know, I had hope because, like I was telling you earlier, I was like, you know what? We fucking just turn the, turn the corner on the new year. 2020 was pretty shitty. It's pretty garbage. Maybe 
people are starting it off on a good note. People are releasing some, at least listening and enjoying some good music. But nope, it's worse than it was. It's a bad sign. The gopher stayed in his hole with a groundhog or whatever. It's just not good. Yeah, 11's Ariana Grande again. 12 is Bad Bunny. 13 is Morgan Wallen. Jesus Christ, that guy has three fucking songs on that list. Well, dude, he's got... Um, so oh. it was 3, 4, 13, 15, 17, 18, 21, 30, 31, 32, 34, yeah, 35, 37. It's, I'm telling you, he's popular right now. 44, 46, 47, 49. So, dude, I, it's his whole album. I, tell, I told you, there's a lot of people, okay, people in our areas, right? The, like the girl who's like dating the guy who they go four wheeling and shit. I fucking forgot to say one of my favorite jokes. I wrote down a good joke for this guy. <laughs> okay, well, let's at do least a, it's going to be organic. Can we? Pre- uh, yeah, let's just, set up, <laughs> let's just set it up. Okay, so take yourself back okay. about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, so this is, let's see. Let me look through my notes here. Oh, okay. So this is like Post Malone for white girls with a pill problem. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of a gritty voice, yeah. Dirty little bad boy sound, yeah. But like, also, you're afraid of black people, and you ride your four wheeler around with your boyfriend and get you go mudding, yeah. And like, I like country. It's like this isn't country. Yeah. No. You like rap, but you're afraid to admit it to your dad. Ooh, damn. Do people think that this is like new? What the, this guy's talking about? Like, this is a fresh person. You're not bringing anything to the conversation, so go away. Now bring anything to the conversation. Right. It's like a little kid standing in a circle with a bunch of adults. Pretty much. But also, do you think it's a sign of, I'm playing devil's advocate a lot this episode, a sign of just where we're at. It's just, uh, of course. we know that the, there's not a lot of albums coming out. So he he's a star. This dude is a star. He was on The Voice. He got in trouble um, for partying without a mask on. So SNL had to like postpone his appearance so it like put him into headlines you know what i mean yeah so then he comes out and these country fans are starved for something new so <clears> so he, here's this guy that he has name recognition everybody right. knows who he is i you know to be completely honest with you these criticisms that i'm throwing at this guy although harsh are not directed to him per se as much as all the pieces of shit that listen to him and Woo! fucking make this platform i mean grow. okay all right yeah. yeah fucking you're better than this Fucking raise your standards. You don't need a fucking new album every day. You know? Mm -hmm. Enjoy the good shit, you know, sparingly and let it last. Fucking grow up. And that's it. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going down this list, man. His whole album's on there, I bet. Uh, Yeah. But I'm not even seeing uh, 14 is the weekend. Blinding Lights. Yeah, it's a good tune. That came out a while ago, so it's it did. Yeah, but he's gonna he's doing the Super Bowl halftime show, so um, he's popular right now. What's that guy's name? Morgan Wallen. Mm-hmm. He reminds me of Aaron Lewis pretending to be a serious musician. You know, remember when like Aaron Lewis from Stained would like break the acoustic guitar out and be like, "This is my fucking. This is how it's supposed to sound." So fucking <laughs> yeah, this track. which is crazy because Aaron Lewis sounds so much better than Morgan. Wallen. I know. Yeah, and. He even was kind of a joke to a lot of like looking back on him now, you're like, This is hilarious. Yeah. Look at this guy. It's been a while. Yeah, right. You have a fucking album called or a song called Mud Shovel. Like and like, you're not like a, the depths of human emotion personified. Right. You know? And this guy's a cartoon version of that. Oof. Yeah. Jeez, that is brutal. That's brutal. I don't like him. Do you think he's the reason why the Capitol got stormed? Yeah. 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 I think it's really his fault. Right. I think well, I did see him post something on his Twitter page that he pretty promptly removed and deleted, but it was it did say something about I can't tell killing if you're Nancy lying Pelosi. <laughs> Till now, <laughs> <laughs> Whew, that was take, con- take a shit that on was, our desk. That was <laughs> that was convincing there for a second. Yeah. Oh man, I don't mean to generalize country. I like immediately it. with MAGA. Yeah, yeah. Pop that's, con- that's I do with pop, con- pop country for sure. Yeah. Yep. All those fucking pieces of shit can pile into a bus and drive off a cliff. I don't give a fuck. Woof. 
You're on fire today. <laughs> you are on fire today. All right. Well, I mean, that is the top 10 songs in the country right now. Yeah. So just when you thought 2020 was over. Dude, 2021 is not starting well. No. <laughs> not at all. No. No. Let's turn things around, boys and girls. Yeah, come on. Let's raise our standards. Yes. Come on. This is an art form, people. Really? This isn't kindergarten. This, this isn't finger painting. Yeah. I've seen them finger paintings you bring home and they suck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to get better. No, it's not. I really don't. All right. <clears throat> All send, right. Send us off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening again this week. Next time we come back, we will have... I'm assuming some more, uh, you know, regular material as far as album reviews go. Hopefully. If you have any, you know, if you got an in out there and you know something hot is coming out, give us a call. Let mm-hmm. us know. Um, we'll be keeping an eye out. Thanks for listening. Right? Review, comment, email, phone call, finger in the butt. Let us know if you like it, if you don't like it. See you next time, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm.